Activase, Altaplace, is indicated for the management of acute ischemic stroke in adults, for improving neurological recovery and reducing the incidence of disability. Treatment should only be initiated within three hours after the onset of stroke symptoms and after exclusion of intracranial hemorrhage by a cranial computerized tomography, CT scan, or other diagnostic imaging method sensitive for the presence of hemorrhage. See contraindications in the full prescribing information. All thrombolytic agents increase the risk of bleeding, including intracranial bleeding, and should be used only in appropriate patients. Not all patients with acute ischemic stroke will be eligible for activase therapy, including patients with evidence of recent or active bleeding, recent intracranial or intraspinal surgery, serious head trauma, or previous stroke within the past three months, uncontrolled high blood pressure, or impaired blood clotting. Please see full prescribing information for additional important safety information. Activase, also known as Altaplace or TPA, is the only FDA-approved drug for improving neurologic recovery and reducing the incidence of disability in adults with acute ischemic stroke. Activase comes in vials of 50 and 100 milligrams. The 100 milligram vial is most commonly used. This program examines the steps required to reconstitute, dose, and administer Activase from the 100 milligram vial. Aseptic techniques should be used at all times during the reconstitution process. This includes thorough hand washing and the use of gloves. To begin, assemble the Activase vial, the vial of sterile water for injection, USP, and the transfer device included in the Activase package. Also, assemble alcohol swabs and two syringes, one for the bolus dose and one for the discarded quantity of Activase, and large bore needles. Reconstitute Activase immediately before administration, using only sterile water for injection, USP, without preservatives, which is provided in the Activase package. This preparation will result in a colorless to pale yellow transparent solution containing Activase at a concentration of 1 milligram per milliliter. Reconstitution should be carried out using the transfer device provided and adding the contents of the 100 milliliter vial of sterile water for injection to the 100 milligram vial of Activase powder. Begin by removing the protective caps from the top of the Activase vial and the vial of sterile water for injection. Then, swab the top of each vial with an alcohol wipe to reduce the risk of contamination. Remove the transfer device from its wrapper and remove the protective cap from one end. Insert the piercing pin vertically into the center of the stopper of the vial of sterile water for injection, keeping the vial upright. Remove the protective cap from the other end of the transfer device. Holding the vial of Activase upside down, position it so that the center of the stopper is directly over the exposed pin of the transfer device. Push the vial of Activase down onto the transfer device, making sure that the piercing pin is inserted through the center of the Activase vial stopper. Invert the two vials so that the vial of Activase is on the bottom, right side up, and the vial of sterile water for injection is on top. Allow the entire contents of the vial of sterile water for injection to flow down through the transfer device into the vial containing Activase, a process that requires approximately two minutes. About half a milliliter of sterile water may remain in the upper vial. Remove the transfer device and the empty vial of sterile water from the Activase vial. Safely discard both the transfer device and the empty diluent vial, according to institutional procedures. Mix the solution with a gentle swirl or slow inversion. Do not shake. Slight foaming of the solution is normal. Let the solution stand undisturbed for several minutes to allow any large bubbles to dissipate. Activase will remain stable at room temperature for up to eight hours after reconstitution. Do not freeze solutions containing Activase. Visually inspect the Activase solution for particulate matter and discoloration before administration. And remember, no medication should be added to infusion solutions that contain Activase. Any unused infusion solution should be discarded. The Activase dose may be calculated as soon as a patient's weight is determined. The Activase dosing slide calculator provides an easy way to reliably determine the correct bolus and infusion dose for your patient based on weight as well as the discard quantity. 
when administering intravenous activase for eligible patients with acute ischemic stroke, the FDA-approved dose is 0.9 milligrams per kilogram, and the total dose should not exceed 90 milligrams. Treatment should be initiated with 10% of the total dose administered as an IV bolus dose over one minute, and the remaining dose infused over 60 minutes. Here is an example of how to determine the correct dose for a patient weighing 180 pounds or 81.8 kilograms. Using the Activase dosing slide calculator, the total dose is determined to be 73.6 milligrams or milliliter equivalents. Remember, Activase has been reconstituted to 1 milligram per milliliter. Note that the discard quantity is 26.4 milligrams or milliliter equivalents. This is the excess quantity that should be withdrawn from the 100 milligram vial and discarded before administering Activase to the patient. Using a syringe, withdraw the excess, in this case 26.4 milliliters, from the 100 milligram vial. When drawing out excess solution, be sure to insert the needle into the peripheral area on the vial top, away from the puncture site caused by the transfer device. As a guide, you may direct the needle into the area on the rubber stopper labeled air, which can also be used as an air vent. Then safely discard the excess quantity according to your hospital's policy. This step helps safeguard against dosing errors. Verify the dosing calculation with another healthcare professional. This can help ensure accurate dosing of Activase. The bolus dose is 10% of the total Activase dose, equaling 7.4 milliliters for our patient weighing 180 pounds or 81.8 kilograms. The infusion dose for that same patient is 66.2 milliliters. This is 90% of the total dose. It is also the amount of solution remaining in the 100 milliliter vial after removal of the excess solution and the bolus dose. Administration of Activase begins with preparation of the bolus dose. To review, the bolus dose of Activase is 10% of the 0.9 milligram per kilogram total dose. To ensure proper dosing, we've already calculated the excess quantity of Activase, removed it from the vial, and safely discarded it. Be sure to discard the excess quantity in accordance with your institution's policy. Once the excess solution is properly discarded, the bolus dose may be withdrawn. Remove the appropriate volume from the vial of reconstituted Activase using a syringe and needle. In this case, it is 7.4 milliliters. Alternatively, you can also draw the bolus dose after hanging the vial by using a syringe with or without a needle to withdraw the bolus quantity from the Y site on the IV tubing, according to your institution's practices. The Activase bolus can be administered by hand or by programming an infusion pump to deliver the bolus dose at the start of the infusion. Remember to prime the IV pump tubing with the Activase solution so that the infusion begins immediately following the bolus dose. Administer the initial IV bolus dose over one minute. The remainder of the Activase dose may be administered by inserting the spike end of an infusion set through the same puncture site created by the transfer device in the stopper of the vial of reconstituted Activase. Peel the clear plastic hanger from the vial label. Hang the vial from the resulting loop. Sometimes the solution may be removed from the vial and delivered using a polyvinyl chloride bag. Because IV pumps and tubing vary, a standardized procedure should be initiated at each hospital to ensure delivery of the full dose of Activase, including the volume of Activase remaining in the IV tubing after the vial is emptied. A common practice is to spike a small 50 milliliter bag of 0.9% sodium chloride injection, USP, with the end of the Activase infusion set when the Activase vial is empty. The infusion should continue at the same rate to ensure that all the Activase remaining in the IV tubing is received by the patient. No medications should be added to infusion solutions that contain Activase. For more information about the dosing and administration of Activase, please see the full prescribing information.